Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. Over the last, uh, I think, seven to ten days, I've been uh, uploading my mission that where I went from Cape Canaveral up to the ISS and then from the ISS out to the moon using the XR2 Raven Star. In part four of that video, I was at the point that I'm at right here, and in fact, this is a save file from that mission. And when I got up to lunar orbit insertion at periapsis, I mentioned that you know, if I control my inward and outward a little bit, then I can have uh, a better overall uh, P target PA, target APA, and target uh, eccentricity than I would get if I just left the retrograde autopilot on. Unfortunately, uh, when I recorded that video, I had only been using Orbiter for like four days, you know, after my six year break, and I just didn't do it right. I couldn't remember which direction I needed to be, so I didn't do it. Um, I didn't do it very, I didn't do it correctly. I'm recording this video on um, June 28th, 2021, which was the day part four was released. And so I now have about a month worth of orbiter experience after having come back. And I feel a whole lot more uh, comfortable and confident than I did uh, a month ago. And, and, then, and then whenever it was that I recorded that lunar orbit insertion burn. So I thought what would be interesting would be to just make a follow up to part four of that video where we're looking at coming out to the moon, getting into orbit around the moon. And I just want to look at maybe three or four different techniques that we can use to get a good, uh, to hopefully get a good PEA, APA, and low eccentricity. Uh, maybe better than we would get if we just let the autopilots do everything for us. So let me go ahead and switch camera views here. And I'm going to go ahead and warp time forward to get closer to the time to periapsis. I'm going to power off this side the only thing I'm going to use for this approach, this first approach, where it's just completely manually, I'm just going to do this manually, is I'm going to use Orbit MFD information. And the only other thing is that I know from a little bit of experience that I need to begin this burn around 25 seconds. So let me go ahead and warp time forward to get closer to that point where we'll begin the burn. A little bit closer than this. And back to real time, and we'll go to the retrograde position because we'll be mostly retrograde for this burn. And the goal here is just to end up with a PEA that is around 20 kilometers. If it's a little bit above, that's fine. If it's a little bit below, that's fine. An apoapsis that's around 20 kilometers, again, a little above or below is fine. And an eccentricity that's preferably, you know, 0 0.0000. So let's go ahead and uh, get closer to the time that I'll begin the burn. And again, I know from experience that, let me just go retrograde really quick just to make sure that's settled. And again, I know from experience that if Rotations. I'm slightly outward, just like maybe that much, when I begin the burn, I will have a, it'll, it'll help me keep my PEA under control. If I'm exactly at 180 when I begin the burn, my PEA will start coming down. So we're going to begin the burn at 25 seconds. And full power on the main and control to lock it. And you can see that my PA actually went down by, you know, 0 0.01. But if I, in a, and if I actually rotate quite a bit outwards, it'll go up. And if I rotate a little bit inwards, it'll go down. So that's the information I'm using. As I, as I, as my PET, PET is positive, I want to be slightly outward. As my PET, PET gets closer to zero, I want to be right on 180. And then as my PET, as I'm past periapsis, my PET is going down, I want to start rotating in. And it's going to get to a point about right here where I really need to cancel because if I continue doing the burn at full power, I'm not going to be able to control it. My PEA is just going to go way down. So now I'm going to use a bit of control main engine. And now I'm just going to use my inward outward to control this as well as I can. So currently it's going, my PEA just went up by a little bit, so I'm going to rotate a bit closer to 180. I'm going to hold about right there for now. And we're just watching our apoapsis and our periapsis, just trying to make sure that those are staying pretty well under control and we need to be ready to cancel the engines at a moment's notice. And 
and the closer our periapsis, uh, closer our apoapsis gets to 20, the quicker our periapsis is going to change. So you can see my PEA is starting to go down. So that means I'm going to rotate a bit more inward, maybe there. And I'm going to switch to translation now. And OK, so I can see my PEA is now going up a little bit and my APA is still going down. So maybe a little bit of main engine. Rotation. And maybe rotate a little bit this way. And my PEA is starting to go down again, so that tells me that I want to rotate a bit more this direction. And I think I'm going to clean up the rest of this strictly with translation because the numbers are so close now. Rotation. And I think we need to go a bit more in this direction because I saw my PEA going down. Translation. And that looks like a pretty good spot. Now I'm just going to watch eccentricity mostly. So it's at, I'm at this point now where my PEA is going down, but my, my APA is also going down. So I feel like at this point I would be better off using inward outward. So I'm going to try a bit of inward to bring the PEA up. And there we are, we are at uh, 0 0.0000 with four decimal points of precision. And our PA and our APA are only separated by um, a few meters. So that's like method one, approach one, doing it completely manually and just using this knowledge of, you know, when to begin the burn and using a bit of inward, out, uh, inward outward rotation combined with killing the engines before, the, before we actually finish the burn and then just cleaning up the rest of the burn with a little bit of main engine and a little bit of linear translation. So we had a pretty good result there, I would say. And this was kind of what I had intended to do in part four of that mission, but I got it wrong because I couldn't remember what to do. So let me switch camera views for a moment. Let me exit out of this scenario and we're gonna reload it from the exact same spot. And I've, I've been having this issue where Orbiter sometimes crashes on me if I don't exit out of the launch pad and reopen it. It doesn't always happen, but it, it happens pretty often. So I'm just going to close that out. And now we're going to launch the exact same scenario. And while that's loading, I'm going to take a sip of water. So the approach that I want to take now... All systems nominal. Go ahead and switch camera views here back to the main. So the approach I want to look at now is uh, what would happen if we used um, some of our tools like Burn Time Calculator. So let's bring up burn time calculator and we're going to press uh, CIR for circularization and that burn is going to be in 3,500 seconds and I'm just going to warp time forward till we get closer to that point and what we're going to do here is we're just going to let burn time calculator handle the entire burn and we're going to leave the uh, retrograde autopilot on the entire time it, and it will do pretty well uh, because the the, the size of the burn or the length of the burn, the burn time for this maneuver, it's not huge like it is at Earth. Earth, we have quite a long burn time here. Uh, what is our burn time? Um, I thought it gave it a, that's our total burn time that we have remaining, but I, is it a 43 second burn? So I'm gonna go into the retrograde position and I'm just gonna leave retrograde autopilot on and we're going to let burn time calculator handle this burn. And again, it will do pretty well. I'm going to come out of time warp because we didn't time warp through the last burn. It will do pretty well, but since it's keeping the vessel at retrograde the entire time, it's not going to be as good as what we would be able to get if we did it manually using what we know about rotating a bit inward and a bit outward. So just a few seconds left on this burn. And this would certainly be good enough for most people, by the way. You wouldn't have to do anything other than what I'm doing here. Um, the point here is just to show, you know, that it's not absolutely perfect. So here we can see, let me turn off the retrograde. So again, it did really well. You know, we're at 19.43. So we only have about one kilometer difference between our PEA and our APA. And our eccentricity is 0 0.0003. So yeah, it did pretty well. Let me go ahead and exit out. Uh, one thing I will say is that, you know, if we had done this at Earth, 
then our then this wouldn't have been as good. Let me exit out. And again, I don't trust the launch pad, so I'm going to exit and reload it. And we're going to load that scenario again. And now let's look at uh, some of our other tools that we have available to us. So in this scenario, all systems nominal, or, or in this attempt, I'm going to use IMFD. So let's load up IMFD. And IMFD actually has a couple of different ways that we can do this. Uh, one of them is um, orbit insert, and another one is circularization. Let's look at the circularization one first. So the only thing about the circularization one is that when you press AB, it starts doing the burn the moment that you press AB. So we still have to know when are we going to do this burn. Um, so let's go ahead and warp time forward here, get closer to the PET. And we're reasonably close. Let's go retrograde. Now, uh, IMFD will actually handle the, um, the position of the vessel for us. But we know it's going to be retrograde, so I wanted to get myself mostly in retrograde. Now again, it, I'm going to actually start to burn according to my altitude. So when we are at... Uh, 21 kilometers, that's when I'm going to begin this burn. So I'm going to press AB when we're at 21 kilometers. So just a little bit of time warp. So we're almost there. So we're at 21.8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and here comes, there's, there's our number. And one thing to notice about what the circularization program is doing is that it's doing what I did manually. It started by rotating slightly outward. And as the burn continues, it's just slowly rotating inward. And by the time the PET is zero, we probably will be at exactly 180. So the nice thing about this program, uh, the circularization program, is that it's doing what we know is correct, but it's doing it automatically. And because it can do it programmatically, um, you know, we don't have to worry about like trying to kill the engine a couple of seconds before the burn is complete because it's it's doing the uh, the inward outward for us. And it back it actually does back off the engine right there at the last moment. And there we have it, and that's even better than what I did manually. So PEA is 20.35, APA 20.39. So um, actually, I think I might have done slightly better than that manually. But I would certainly rather do this because it's automated and uh, it's more realistic. So let's take a look at another, uh, at least one more approach. And again, if I don't exit this and reopen it, I don't trust that it's not going to crash on me. So we'll go back into that scenario and just give that a second to load. So this time I'm going to use the orbit insert program, which has one nice advantage over circularization. All systems nominal. Let me just cancel that really quick one second. So we're going to bring up interplanetary MFD and I'm going to go to course and we're going to go to orbit insert. And I'm just going to change the projection just simply so it looks better. And by default, so we have some options here. We can we can tell interplanetary MFD to uh, do our orbit insert based on our eccentricity, based on some apoapsis that we're trying to target, uh, based on major axis orbital period. But here we just want a circular orbit around the moon. So I'm going to go for, I'm just going to leave it on its default of eccentricity of zero. And, you know, we're done. Like, all I had to do was open Interplanetary MFD, bring up the Orbit Insert program, and then uh, technically we do need to go and turn on Auto Burn. I, out of habit, I always bring up the burn vector. You don't have to do that. But we just press AB, and now we're done, and we can just warp time forward. So the advantage that this has over the circularization program is that it will do all the maneuvering for us. Um, or rather, I should say, it will... It will do the burn 
automatically on time. Whereas with the circularization program, I had to press AB when at the time that I wanted to start the burn. So once they begin burns, we'll come out of time warp just so that everything that we're doing is the same. So we're just a few seconds away from the burn. And we'll go back to real time. And um, yeah, it's just going to uh, do this burn. It's got a, it's mostly facing retrograde. It, it is, it, we do have a slight uh, rotation to our, our roll, but that part doesn't matter. Uh, the only thing that matters is, you know, that we're putting the majority of our burn into the, um, you know, against the direction of flight. But you will notice that it's pretty much just holding 180. It's not adjusting inward or outward. So that tells me that while this burn will be very good, it's not going to be as good as when we did it completely manually or as when we use the circularized program. But there's something else we can do after we use this program. So, yeah, it got a 20.08 and a 20.64. So it's pretty close, not as good as we did manually, not as good as circularization did. But again, we have a big advantage here of the fact that we just brought up the program and hit auto burn and then we could time warp till the end of it. Now there's no reason that we can't go ahead and just go over to orbital and say, uh, yeah, we got really close on that, but it's not perfect. So go ahead and auto burn to circularize the orbit the rest of the way. So you can kind of use those two programs back to back to get like the best of all worlds, essentially. And you notice what it's doing or what it did is, you know, it rotated slightly off, uh, off from perfect retrograde in order to make sure that when it did that burn, it didn't uh, bring one down and the other up or something. You know, it's bringing them closer together. And you can see now our eccentricity is uh, zero across the board. Okay, so let me go ahead and switch camera views here. So that is, um, I think, I lost count of how many methods. I think, we do, I think we showed four methods there. And all of them are pretty good, but you can see there are some advantages of doing some approaches over the other. I think probably ideally um, the best way to do it is to use interplanetary MFD's orbit insert program followed up by its uh, circularization program if you're really... Um, if you're really obsessed about making sure the orbit is perfectly circular. If you're not so obsessive over that, which you generally don't need to be, then just using the orbit insert program would be good enough. Now that, that, all, that applies for the moon or for bodies that have uh, the gravity of the moon with the same velocity that we had when we came up to the moon at periapsis. Uh, you will find that these approaches need to be, all the approaches are the same for each body you're at, but if you do if you do the second approach that we took at Earth, where we just let burn time calculator take care of everything for us facing uh, retrograde the entire time, then our eccentricity is gonna be pretty far off. And that's because the gravitation, uh, that would be like if you're going from the moon back to the Earth, you're going to have a much higher velocity, so it's gonna be a much longer burn and since it's a much longer burn, the time that you're facing exactly retrograde um, is, is, is not ideal. You want to be slightly off of retrograde before you reach periapsis, exactly at retrograde when you're at zero on your PET, and then as you pass PET and go in the other direction, you want to be slightly inward. And again, the higher your velocity, the, the bigger of a difference that kind of thing is going to make. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little look at uh, some of these different techniques, and I will see you in the next video.